Welcome back to the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And uh, right now, we're going to be playing, of course, as the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, but patriotic games. Computer games are very popular with their youth. Maybe it would be worth allocating a small budget to their creation. Kremlin Game Studio has been making games about this Cold War era for several years now, which the players allowed to preserve socialism in a country and leave the motherland of greatness, but they're definitely underfunded. What do you think? Uh, sure, we'll see what happens. Party of Patriots. The reason the Party of Patriots was founded and organized by such personalities such as Vladimir Solovyov, Margarita Simonyan, Rada Zainalova, and various other individuals who have defended Putin's regime in the past. They call the current leadership of the country weak and indecisive, and they call Valery Rashkin a liberal's puppet. Let them whine all they want, the people of Russia have made their choice. And decisive, well, we'll show them. Arrest them all. Which I don't really want to do, but I don't want to increase authoritarian Democ Democrat support by that much, so... Even though I do want more free speech, but whatever. But we're still supporting small businesses, which we've just finished. And which we're doing, going to class unity. Um, let's see. With a state owned by the people, co cooperation between capitalists and workers become possible and even useful. Capitalists no longer have real power. The goal is to maintain the economy and create jobs. We'll be able to unite their efforts of all sectors of the society for the common good. Monthly society development. Good. Nikolai Kolomentsev. Yes. Because we need to get rid of... Uh, Capitalist conspiracy. Victory Day. If you want about Victory Day, please go right ahead as well. When completed, we get more liquidity and less influence from the people's entrepreneurs. And far right obscurantism. Anti Soviet resistance. Another peace accords, huh? Of course, we're still fighting in, the, in Africa, but what else is new, you know? How's the world looking? Uh, Iraq is kind of exploded. But I'm not sure if we really want to support any side here. I'm not sure if we really really want to. People's Republic of China is looking nice and thick. Republic of Taiwan. Oh, Republic of China is down there too. People are killing each other down here as well. Xinjiang burns. Huh. Alrighty. Oh, Xi Jinping asked by the military. Look at that. I don't think I've seen this one yet. Maybe I have. You gotta play as China sometime too. Ah, class unity. So it's got completed. Yay. Wow, look at our money. Monthly change plus 38 billion. Because the taxes of exports compared to everything else, not bad. Very nice. Economic sovereignty. Monthly income growth. Uh, that's not good. Revive dreams of the future. I've completed adaptive to China socialism. We get more research speed and month monthly academic development. Oh. In Soviet times, people dreamed of a world where science and progress would open the door to a bright future. We will continue this legacy by developing science, education, technology. Belief in a better tomorrow must once again become a source of inspiration for all. We're not just destroying an old dream, we are making it a reality. At this point, we might as well get down this way too. It'd be good to you guys as well. So what do we have here? We've got new NEP, which is good. Subsidies for the businesses, not terrible. State unions. Two paths, one goal. Oh, national speech. Power in China, look at that. In a quiet corner of a small cafe in Moscow, two old friends have a lively argument. Both were born in the late Soviet era, and each of them sees the future of the country in a different way. Their conversation becomes a symbol of what is going on in the minds of millions of Russian citizens. The first of them, Comrade Maxim Cherapanov, a successful businessman, joined the Communist Party soon after its return to power and enthusiastically supports the course of socialist market economy. The second, Comrade Anton Ivanov, is a simple worker who has devoted his life to labor and is faithful to the old ideals of Leninism. Maxim, that is not all. Is that what we voted for? Uh, uh, we voted for communism, for the way we used to live. No private shops, no market, everything according to plan. And now what? All these people's enterprises, it's capitalism. All this contradicts Lenin's ideas, exclaimed Ivan, banging his fist angrily on the table. And Toha, times have changed. We're building socialism, it doesn't mean we have to abandon the market. Look at China. Haven't they achieved the greatest success? After all, think of all the people, the youth. The market under state control gives people confidence and freedom. We still control development, we still plan, but we let people breathe, work, and develop. 
That's not capitalism, brother. It's a new market socialism. Sharapanov objected, stroking a tray with documents on a, con on a new contract. There's silence. Ivana frowned, looking at the active construction of new social housing uh, outside the window. You're probably right. The people need stability. And the youth, huh? They'd howl the planned economy. Maybe it's better to live in peace, albeit with the market, than to slip back into chaos. If it works, then maybe that's our new future, he finally agreed reluctantly. We move towards socialism through new paths. This kleptocratic state kind of sucks. Nationalized resource committees or companies. Oh boy, I don't want to lose that. Anti Soviet resistance is not good. What do you need to get rid of? Party rejuvenation. Shield and sort of the revolution. In order to protect the state and party, it's necessary to create a new security body that will be loyal only to us. We'll form a new KGB from proven cadres. We'll never betray the ideals of the revolution. Its effectiveness may not be comparable to the FSB, but loyalty is more important than anything else. Tibetan insurgency. Oh. Is China falling apart? About a lot of bite for new socialism. Invite the left front. Glory to the working class. That's fine to do. How's America looking? I still have to play as Othman Boffin. Or National Socialists of America. Looks like a pinhead to me. Our cause, huh? Economic sovereignty. Oh boy. Exterminate the fascists. Hmm. The new Soslov, Dmitry Novikov. Syndicalists, huh? Sino Japanese Cold War begins. Um, as much as I want to do that, I'm going to keep throwing on a few more office parks here as well. Especially where we built up a lot of our infrastructure already. Uh, so after that, monthly income growth I do like. Party rejuvenation. State atheism. Zelensky so reelected. Because I do want to go to war. But I do want to finish this route as well. What is this? A Soviet middle class, a large and prosperous middle class, must become the basis of a, of a successful socialist economy. Our goal is to force formation. It consists of real professional specialists and highly skilled workers. Soviet does not mean poor. First Soviet corporation, most recently, was created under the name Sovkoznik. It unites under its wings such as brands such as Putin's Russia, Spare, Yandex, VK, Tricolor, and many others. Pablo Grudinin became the general director of Sovkoznik. Uh, Sovkoznik. Although formerly a people's enterprise, Sokovznik has all the hallmarks of a capitalist organization, a corporation. Uh, well, Orthodox party members have already condemned Pavel Grudinin's actions, accusing him of open opportunism. The people of our country have mostly welcomed the creation of Sokovznik. He's a strong businessman. We'll watch, his interest, we'll watch with interest as this develops. Yeah, we're going to go with that route. Because I would like getting more political power tier 2, consumer goods, yeah. It's the hell security. Oh, you guys have actually done pretty darn well here. Look at that. Great job, guys. Good job, Molly. Gennady Zedikov passes away. In Moscow, at the age of 58, the former head of the headquarters of the Russian armed forces in Syria, ex commander of the Eastern Military District. Colonel General Gennady Zitko died. The military commander died after a long illness, said Mikhail Degtyarev, governor of the Karabarovsk territory. Thank you for service, comrade. Oh, well, that's not good. Crud. Uh, guess you're going to take and replace? I suppose. Purchase Buster. Why not? Bust him. More office parks. Ooh, our economy went down that way. Well, let's see what happens after this. <coughs> 
All right, can we help anybody else here? People's defensive mind no more. Well, we don't like either one. It's gonna be at war. Congolese, Congolese, Zionist civil, Zionist civil war. Oh, the Jews. Oh. Oh God. Constitutional Civil War. Saudi. Oh, is the Arabian Civil War still raging on? Are you still at war with somebody? Oh, Riyadh. National Liberalism. Absolute Monarchy. Well, we don't like either one. The Republic of Ethiopia. Chinese Investments. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. Oh, we can actually send two. Look at that. Just get us doing something here. Guess we could send people to America, but whatever. <clears throat> we can send three things of planes. That's pretty nice. Attack helicopters. Sure. Maybe attack helicopters, attack helicopters. Oh, hopefully. We have no enemy air force here. It's Africa, so hopefully not, but you never know. The Belt and Road Initiative. Well, that'll be good. The Belt and Road Initiative opens new opportunities for us. We'll strengthen our participation in this project, which connects Asia, Europe, and Africa. Investments in infrastructure and trade routes will benefit our economy and strengthen ties with China. Even though they're not having a good time either. Uh, Moscow Beijing Agreement. China will actively begin to invest in our economy. Okay. Non aggression pact. Gains pro Chinese stance. Cool. Our relationship with China has always been important, but now is the time to strengthen it definitely. We will conclude a new agreement that will strengthen our economic and political cooperation. Uh, this will allow us to avoid previous disagreements and make relations with China even more stable and productive. We received a proposal to create a special economic zone of Vladivostok, giving this area incredible preferences uh, and tax breaks for foreign and domestic companies. Uh, this will contribute well to the development of the region and investments will pour in like a river. By the way, China, which borders with us, will certainly like this decision very much. What a great idea. Oh, a lot of stock becomes a megalopolis. Okay. How much money do we not have? I'm okay with this. Unbreakable union, huh? How are we looking for now? One, two, three, four. Not bad. Where are you guys at? What are you looking like? Popov. Well, they're not really registered and doing anything. Of course, the, the air bases are pretty far away. Maybe best to send you back. Can I deploy any more multi-role attack aircraft? Give them a couple days. There we go. And they're pretty fast. Alright, obscurantism. I don't know how to get rid of this. Soviet resistance. Soviet renaissance. Socialist religious liberty. Huh. Cult of Lenin. By the CSTO members to the USSR. Economic sovereignty under current conditions. Dependence on oil and gas exports to Europe is becoming risky. We'll start to gradually reduce energy supplies in the West in order to protect our economy from external threats. And still, we'll use these resources to develop our own industries. Sounds great to us. 
Can you guys go in and help out? How are we doing with there? Slowly learning, looks like. Oh, and there goes Biden. Alex Jones, you're a little blacker than I thought you would be, but that's okay. And the Nazis are on the move. I need to play as a Patriot Front sometime. Ooh. October Revolution Day. The day, November 7th, the anniversary of the October Revolution celebrated in Russia. All it is one of the most significant in the history of the country and reminds of the turning point. Uh, reminds us of the turning point when power passed into the hands of the working class. On this day, numerous events are held to celebrate the anniversary of the October Revolution. Parades, processions, and concerts are held in various cities of Russia, attended by representatives of various political parties and public organizations. Special attention is paid to the education and patriotic feelings among young people. School children and ch uh, students take an active part in festive events where they are told about the significance of the October Revolution and its role in history of the country. This helps the younger generation to realize the importance of fighting for the rights and freedom. On this day, it's important to remember the importance of the ideals that form the basis of the October Revolution. It's a struggle for social justice, equality, and freedom. The anniversary of the October Revolution calls on every person to actively participate in the life of society and strive to create a better future for all citizens of Russia. Glory to the working class. Ah, a small little buff here and there is not bad. Commission the East Asia Defense Initiative. And Economic Sovereignty, which I don't really want to do, because that really hurts our monthly income growth. Which really sucks, actually. Oh. Military wins in South Africa. I forgot they were doing stuff. Inflation's pretty high, too. See what y'all can do. Dutch King assassinated. Oh no. That's sort of contracts. Fuel gain per oil. Increased dividends. Effects of Chinese investment increased by two times. Whole investment forum. Chinese investments. Lose political power and off map city. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. There you go, nice. My ball have declared war in Texas. Let's get our guides over here. It's a little laggy, but what do you expect? And the hammer and sickle are forged. The first steps on the road of socialism have been taken, and we are moving towards it confidently. Our program has begun to bring results, and the country has returned to a just social order. The sickle and hammer once again become symbols of the revitalized state. We are firmly on the path to socialism. Very nice. More political power, better consumer goods, more construction speed. Stuff we love. All right, so here, from here on out, we got to keep building at least one city. And we also need at least one milli. The roads will come along. We're going to use the civvies to balance out the millies because millies or military factories cost money. And I want us to be more than wealthy. But we're going to have to think about it. Naval stuff, cavalry. It's not bad for motorized attack and defense. I like armored attack and defense, though. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Massive attacks on foreigners in China. Ooh. Oh, you can bring back those three helicopters then. Indo Pakistani war. Very nice. Uh, should help re reduce their strength by quite a bit. And by the left front. Uh, Sergei Udaltsov and the left front have proven the commitment to social justice and a revolutionary change. We'll invite them into the government to strengthen our ranks with experienced and committed supporters. Their ideas will help advance our cause. Uh, oh. Support Rushkin's group. Promote specialists. The Soviet Union collapsed in part due to uh, being confident, but not entirely bona fide people often made it to higher positions. To avoid this, we need to support the technocratic trend and begin to promote qualified and most importantly ideologically savvy specialists who really know their business. Rashkin's personality cult. Rashkin's personality is perceived ambiguously by the people. He's often ridiculed. Many see him as a threat in the form of Second Gorbachev, and some still have not forgiven him the, the moose he killed in 2021. Finally, so wash him over this felt and create a correct image. Play scandalous reformer with communist talk. Oh, look at that. Very good. You lose quite a bit of political power, but you get more recovery rate. Is this necessary for the new Soviet Republic? Exterminate fascists. Oh. That'd be good to do. We'll do both. Nice. 
Uh, we could do this one with acceptable uh, worker rights, high wealth or benefits, pension plan. The most important thing in any society is the well-being of its inhabitants. That's why it's so important to take care of those who are unable to work, such as the elderly and disabled. Now's the time to demonstrate our commitment to the people. We'll increase salaries and pensions so that every citizen feels the support of the state. Oh boy. I hope expenses went down. Making more is good and all. Here. Good, 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 good. Light tanks, we're gonna need way more of these guys too. That's the only seven day focus, that's nice. By the left front, a cult of Lenin. Lenin is a symbol of struggle for freedom and equality. The father of the October Revolution, which led to the creation of a free and democratic Soviet Russia. His ideas about social justice and equality even today. Lenin is one of the elegant leaders in the Russian history. He proclaimed the right of nations of self determination, recognized the establishment of genders, fought for labor rights, and created the foundations of Soviet democracy. Now that we communists are back in power, we expect to revive the cult of Lenin and his ideals. We must promote his unique leadership qualities, his dedication to rebuilding socialism and selfless love for the motherland, of course. Uh, once we can. Uh, continue party rejuvenation. Rejuvenation of the party is a guarantee of its future. A young cadre is full of enthusiasm and determination will give a new breath to the CPRF. We must continue this process of attracting more and more young communists to the leadership who will ready, be ready to lead the country into the future without abandoning the ideals of socialism. Right. Did I not click on one? It's fine. Sort of. Uh, who else can we help out now? Ah. Four divisions now. Julia Salazar. Eh, she's not. Oh, she's okay. So we can set up to ten. Oh boy. <coughs> I'll attempt to find the Great Plains. Still getting a good amount of political power. Support Rashkin's group. Might as well. A new era of socialism. Yeah, it's okay. Accelerate automation. Eventually, once we can, we will. Ah, we got that one done too. Unbreakable union. Sure. Hey, we're researching a lot, which is great. Construct Southern Kazakh Rail Network. Oh, that's not bad too. Southern Kazakh network. Ah. Go ahead. It's fine. Well, let's see what we can do in America. The Soviets have landed. did not think I'd be sending Soviet soldiers to fight in America against Donald Trump and Joe Biden, but, you know, here we are. Road Development Initiative. Well, the countryside has suffered from neglect and destruction for many years. It's time to revitalize villages, create new jobs, and improve infrastructure. We'll devote resources to rural development to give people back the opportunity to live and work in comfort. I think that's a great idea. But it is a little laggy, and that's okay. America's supposed to lag at the world. Uh, but unfortunately, the growth of Texan Red Guards. Unfortunate. Hello, what is this? Uh, sure. Where are you guys at? Oh, you guys want to move or not? Nah? What is this? Build a branch of MCMR. Oh, yeah. Here. Take it off real quick. Oh, did nothing, okay. Oh, yeah, 
up here. Interception defense, air superiority. Because we do all that stuff. Full power to the Soviets. Um, new Soviet culture. Oh, yeah, that'd be good to do. The great masters of the Soviet art, such as Mayakovsky and Tatlin, inspired people to create a new world. Their spirit comes alive again in our time, or revitalized Soviet culture by bringing creators together to create new cutting edge art for a socialist feature. The time of the new Soviet avant garde is upon us. And full power of the Soviets. It's time to return real power to the Soviets. Soviet democracy, where power belongs to the people through elected councils, will once again be the basis of our state. Good. Democracy, we're so back. Well, alrighty. Can you help out here? Push back against Rashkin's reforms. In recent days, government buildings in major cities saw an influx of anti Rashkin protesters. At first glance, it may seem that those uh, are pesky. Uh, Putin and other old regime supporters, but on closer look, many comments and their slogans can be seen around, sometimes outweighing others. They claim that Rashkin is a liberal Western spy in New Gorbachev, with comments that add that he betrayed precepts of true Leninism and began harmful liberalization that will lead a young RSFSR to the disaster. Secret services, by the order of Politburo, Bureau, have begun investigating possible funding from anti communist personas, but nothing has been achieved so far. These protesters are, however, soon to be a vocal minority. The absolute majority of the population are still currently reaping benefits of new social economy and are happy with the winds of change brought by the Rashkinite reformers. The gale does not stop at the frontier, and neither shall we. Ah, so they do have some people here. Victory Day, of course, once again. Egypt calls up reserves. Full power to the Soviets. New Lenin enrollment. Like 100 years ago, the party needs a new generation of committed people ready to devote themselves to building socialism. We're launching a new call inspired by Leninist traditions to attract young and active citizens to our ranks. This is a chance for everyone to participate in a great cause. Association Democratic States. Association Democratic States is a proposed intergovernmental economic political organization that acts as a forum for socialist states across the world to cooperate, inspired by groups such as the Communist International and the ComCon. For decades, these nations have never been able to stand united against capitalist menace surrounding the country, being left to fend for themselves against those who wish to infringe on their very way of life. If the proletariat is to rise from the ruins and claim victory over their oppressors, uh, this must change. We must be the ones to spark such change. Talks with diplomats from Venezuela, Cuba, and Belarus have been finalized, leaving the bourgeoisie the world to cower in fear of unity. The game is a success. The developers of, uh, have tried their best, taking a risk to make a new game in a new genre. They decided to create an interesting venture in the Civil War setting. Our gamers clearly liked the game. A huge share of the praise came from the Russian players. In the West, the game did not get the same success, having received the status of a curiosity from Eastern Europe, but Ch Chinese gamers liked it. Fan translation is being prepared by enthusiasts. The developers, having received an unprecedented income, have already denounced a sequel. What can we say as a result? The Soviet gamers satisfied and proud. The money was not uh, invested in vain. Look at that. Nice. I like that. Very nice. Alright, so supplies are really bad here. Oh god, supplies are probably really bad all over the place here. Do I have supply help at all? I mean, it could get Fort Worth, maybe. This area is a supply hub. <coughs> Strong body armor is nice. Fuel refining is good. Case maybe. Oh, we got it. Nice. Well, that's a case. I should be able to do okay. What if we just told you to go? I'm 
Unbreakable Union. Increased dividends, that'd be nice. There you go. New land and enrollment. Yep. Battle of Denver. We did what we could. And weaken church's influence. While we have nothing against the faith, we must ask ourselves what role does the church play in the past? Serving the previous regime have become an instrument of suppression and obsequiousness to the upper classes. The time has come to weaken his influence so they can no longer interfere in the affairs of the state and people. Good job, guys. The rise of the Russian indie game dev. After the revival of the Russian avant garde and futurism, which has been forgotten for decades, artists, musicians, and writers began to create new and bright and unusual creations. Support new talents to begin to allocate funds for the creation of new works and the organization of exhibitions, concerts, and other events. The video game industry was not also left behind. Many developers began to create games that are unusual and thought-provoking. They used elements of avant-garde and futurism to create truly unique game roles. Many of them became very popular with fans, among fans of weird games. Thanks to the boon in the indie game industry, Rush became one of the leaders in the production of obscure and avant-garde games. Nayasno. Hey, we'll see what happens. Uh, enemy air support goes down. I like less enemy air support. Air support mission efficiency? Uh, sure, why not? It's a little different than normal. Since we're here. Hello? There you go. Just a few more, huh? Third African War, alright. Sounds about right. Math brought back from extinction. And when we go to war, we'll go to war with a whole bunch of people. Oh, and we still want to do this stuff up here too. African socialism. Oh, whoops. And the many instances of colonial repression and enslavement brought on by the capitals of Europe, you need not look further than Africa. After nearly a century of pillaging and looting, which only ended because the people of Africa took arms up against their overlords, the European powers still maintain a presence in the continent. With nations such as France exploiting the resources and labors of countries in West Africa, going so far as to stitch together Frankenstein and federations to maintain the stranglehold, any leader who dares to speak out against their neocolonialism is put through a coup d'etat, a death due to unknown circumstances, or outright political assassinations. If we are to succeed in our division, we must secure Africa from our adversaries by fostering socialist movements. Hey, academic development increases too. Great. As long as it's all, well, complex, huh? It's getting slightly worse, but it's not good, but whatever. It's not getting any better. But we're trying. Supply. Good. Hmm. This is good too. East, New World, Pink Wave, New Red, Pink Wave. Our American comrades. Cult of Lenin. Yeah. A Red UN? Same sex marriage in Russia? The history of same sex relationships in Russia is long and complicated in the early years of the Soviet Union. Their tolerance was born, but over time, gravity decreased under Vladimir Plutin. Same-sex marriage became legal in many countries around the world, but in Russia they still remained illegal. After the communists came to power, the issue was raised again. And after the recent reprisal of blasphemy laws, the debate reached its peak. At the recent direct line with the Russian president, Valery Lashkin, that was asked about the legalization of same-sex marriage in Russia. 
Hello, Rafa Dorovich. Good afternoon. I'm an activist of Russia of the future, and we have a very important question for you. Good afternoon. Valery Fedorovich, what's going on with same-sex marriage? The issue will be raised more and more often, and we would like to know if they will be legalized. Do you discuss this in the party? Listen, in your opinion, the people of non-traditional orientation being persecuted in our country now, do we restrict the rights in any way? All repressive laws have been repealed, and what more do you want? Legalization. Same-sex marriages. Oh yeah, tell me at least one socialist country where they're allowed. Cuba. Same-sex marriage is allowed in Cuba. Did you know that a referendum on his legalization was held there? Well, if we had a referendum, would you mind? Qu yes, quite. Thank you for the reply. And there you go. And that's your answer. Start international peacekeeping mission. Oh. Invite CIS members of the ADS. Of course. We could really use Cheyenne right now. There you go. Simple and sure, why not? Soviet Union Restoration Referendum. Despite its name, the referendum on the restoration of the USSR is a rather symbolic act that will strengthen the connection with their glorious past and confirm that the people support the return of the great Soviet power. Although there's no practical result from this action, as it is held only on the territory of our country, we're already beginning to introduce the second four letter USSR into the document circulation, paving the way for the revival of the country. Which will be a great thing. Just go ahead. Battle of Philadelphia City Atheism. Too hard line. Boganet. Ooh, State Atheism gets a lot more political power. I like that. Let's attack though. A lot more research speed. Wow. 5% more Libertarian Socialism. Five percent or ten percent? Boganet. African socialism, of course. Soviet restoration referendum. Invite CSDO members of the USSR. Our CSDO allies must see that the Soviet system is a path to prosperity and justice. It's time to invite them to reorganize the governments and along our lines and join the revived USSR. Together we'll create a new plan of union of peoples based on the brotherhood and socialism. We have enough divisions for all this. 47 armored SPHGs. Armored SP. Increases to two now. Or any more. Result of the referendum. Bill met Rashkin's decision to hold the referendum ambig ambiguously. While well, the fighters for traditional values insisted that the very fact of holding a referendum was another blow to Russia, radical LGBTQ activists talked about same sex marriage as an inalienable right. 
human right, and that they should be resolved without any referendums in the end. The referendum was held peacefully, although almost any incidents. A result, almost 85% against, 15% for, same-sex marriages remain banned in Russia. You'll get married in your mental hospital. Nice. How are we doing here? We're not doing anything, okay. Supply is really bad, but don't worry about it. Once we get to Great Falls, it'll be fine. Choose a side. Invite the Republic of Angola. Mozambique. Well, let's see what happens with, first with Angola. Centrism, huh? So, C S C S T O. Do we know how many we have? That's Namibia. How about this? Let's improve relations first, and then we'll ask them. Sounds like a plan to me. And then window to Europe. Great idea is no, no borders in our window to Europe is opening again. The workers and communist parts of Eastern Europe look to us with hope. Soon revive forgotten ties, unite the peoples against NATO aggression. Together we're ready for any challenge, together we'll crush imperialists. Moldovan maneuvers. We must ensure that all territories formerly governed by the Moldovan Soviet Socialist Republic are fully incorporated into the USSR again, and are they ready to fight with us and against the enemy? Sorry, I'm taking a while to get through everything here, but it is what it is. So, did they say yes or no? ADS member. Oh. Some ball play in Eritrea. Choose a side, I guess. Annexation of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Surface Kazakh tungsten deposits. Well, okay. Modern equipment, good. Ku and Donetsk. Bite Belarus, Armenia. South African Civil War. The Republic of South Africa has collapsed. The tenuous balance that was established by the end of apartheid in 1994 has finally given out. And the various political factions of South Africa have taken up arms to fight for the vision of the country's future. Objectively speaking, there are only two factions which a new people's government can choose back those being the African National Congress and the Economic Freedom Fighters. The ANC has been the governing part of South Africa since it won the country's first universal elections almost 30 years ago. It is a party of Nelson Mandela, and their relationship to them and their struggle goes back to the days of the old Soviet Union. However, they moderated and stagnated the longer they have been in power. There are many who say that it was the ANC's corruption, inefficiency, and decision which has made the civil war inevitable. In their stead stand the economic freedom fighters, a radical Marxist-Leninist faction led by the former ANC youth leader, Julius Malema. The EFFs split off from the ANC due to the latter making compromises about land reform and redistribution. They say that the South African Revolution is incomplete with economic uh, complete economic reorganization of the country. Do we respect or historic ties to the ANC uh, and support them in their struggle to maintain order in South Africa? Or do we better wait behind the vanguard of the EFF? Well, 
I mean, right now, I mean, Civil War is way over. Union of South Africa, support the economic freedom fighters. Uh. I don't think it really mattered in the end. Whoopsie. I should have. Oh, well, next time we'll do that. South Ossetia. Well, let's see. Kyrgyzstan. Oh, they like us. Oh. Armenia's in the group. Okay. Oh, country girls. Hurrah. Yay. Look at that. Invite Belarus. Nice. We're even stronger now. And I've got more resistance, although not good. Not ideal, but whatever. Moldovan maneuvers. <coughs> Improve anti tank weapons. Eventually, we do need to roll back liberal reforms. Yeah, definitely. This definitely has been hurting us. Fate of Shogyu, Fate of the PMC Wagner, uh, Operation Invictus. We invite the Central Asian countries back into our union. We'll welcome them as brothers and sisters in solidarity. If they refuse to join us willingly, then we'll use force to bring them under our sway. Operation Minerva. We must expand our influence in the Transcaucasian countries. If they do not agree with the jo to join the USSR voluntarily, we'll use our military might to achieve this. I'm okay with this. How are we doing? Just mark out, you'll be fine. Conservative party wins elections. Uh, I think I should have gone to war earlier, but oh well. It is what it is. I want to do everything before going to war. Alright, so. Oh, what is this? Fun remaining socialist party? Huh. We need more money. We need a lot more money. How are we looking here? Yeah, it is what it is. Subdue Transnistria. Coup in Donetsk. Happens. Oh, never mind. I guess we're at war with Tajikistan. Oh. Oh, this is gonna suck. So that was my bad. I didn't mean to do that. Happens, you know, but now we're way, but society development increased. <coughs> Which is actually the most important one. Modern society, good. Let's get in there, y'all. Cities of the sun. Progress is the future. The future belongs to communism. After the parties, a new initiative in intensifying scientific funding to pursue the utopian ideals, dozens of research centers have sprung up or been rebuilt. However, the most staggering advance of them, Enterprise 3826, has been constructed in mountainous areas of Soviet Kazakhstan. There, biology th breakthrough experiments are done in the fields of biological botanical studies, experimental medicine, and all sorts of advanced technology. 
all conducted in enormous complexes that are named after famous Soviet and Russian scientists, while engineers and researchers live in purpose-built towns near the facilities. The mind overflows with ideas about the advancement and improvement of the land of the forefathers. From artificial intelligence and automation to flying cities, one which could perhaps someday become the new capital of the new union. The enterprise will surely become the birthplace of many technologies of tomorrow. The future will be beautiful. Fantastic cities will rise in this land. Mirror of socialism. You're joining us whether you like it or not. Well, at least we did go to war. You know. Oh, I actually like the block apartments too. I like to get that one research. Oh. Not a single Transnistrian communist will end up in prison again. Hey, look at that. Red flag slide by Donbass. After a victory in the elections, it became clear that the republics of Donbass must also change. Our special services carried out a series of operations aimed at discrediting the current governments, and then with the help of our loyal military, carried out peaceful coups. Comrade Rashkin has had a different vision of Donbass. It had become a haven for the new Soviet Ukrainian government, and the necessary bureaucratic arrangements have already been made. Very soon, a new uh, Ukrainian Soviet Federator of Socialist Republic will be established. The mistakes of the past have also been taken into account, and the new Soviet Ukraine will be a federation like Russia. In Donetsk, a broad socialist left coalition has been formed from local communists, fugitive members of the CPU, and members of the Borotba Association. Ukrainians already condemned us and called a new stage of escalation, of course. There are many in Donbass who are dissatisfied with their actions and consider it a betrayal of Russian interests, but we'll deal with these chauvinists. All of Ukraine will be red. It's an ultimatum. Donbass socio social economic reforms. Red Army buildup. Ah, Ukrainian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. We like that a lot. Support people's initiatives. Oh, socialism with human face. All local initiatives must be supported. Our people are used to the idea that all important decisions are made at the top and nothing depends on them. It's time to cure them of this ailment and raise a competent civil society. It's time to develop a full fledged new concept of building socialism in the 21st century. Neo Soviet democracy. Huh. Way to the young. Then the Federacy is restored. Well, okay. As cool as that is. That's weird. And we're at peace now. Do we need to do this for Uzbekistan too? Operation Minerva. Azerbaijan, Georgia, yes. Prepare to march west. Oh, Indianapolis. We see the forces of imperialism once again trying to impose their will on the peoples of the world. The Western powers of Europe, obsessed with the lust for power and wealth, are preparing to encroach on our freedom and independence. They've forgotten the lessons of the past, but we remember. We remember the heroism of our ancestors who broke the back of fascism and defended the independence of our motherland. A new round of history awaits us, in which we must stand up to defend our sovereignty, our deals in the future. The impending conflict with Europe is inevitable. We must be ready to face it with all of our might. Oh, see, you know, I thought we'd go to war with them. You know, just in case you guys are here anyways. Belarus is nice and happy with us. We like that. No more party rejuvenation. That's fine. More military factories. Uh, there and... American comrades, the United States of America was once a single global superpower. Challenged and rivaled by none. Their sphere of influence stretched from East Asia to North America and Europe. 
To the Russians, America was the embodiment of everything wrong with the world. They promoted capitalist degeneracy across the globe, poisoned countries with their ideals, and threatened the very core of Russian civilization for decades. That was until a single virus was able to kick the whole structure down, leaving many in awe how fragile the American political system really was. Now that they have collapsed under their own weight, we must avert our attention to those who made the best out of their situation. The workers who have valiantly risen up against their overlords, who fight for freedom. We'll send them as much aid as we can. To make sure that America rises once more, they'll be a part of the global, uh, you know, new global sphere. Oh, and there goes the Union of America. Oh, wow. That's a solid South. That's a lot of Nazis. Even Donald Trump lasted longer than them. Wow. So we're looking good there. Special military operations at all? Anybody? Humanitarian age, or why not? The Red East. Starting with the chairman Mao Zedong's Chinese Revolution in the 40s, East Asia has been a hotbed for socialist movements, giving way to many great theorists and nation builders. Their own distinct version of socialism has persisted to the modern, a modern day, with East Asia hosting some of the last remaining socialist countries, such as the DPR Korea, the People's Republic of China, and Vietnam. Our party's positive relationship with the CPC and our governments in China has been a focal point of our ideology and received the global socialist movement claim victory, but we must further consolidate our presence in East Asia and build a relationship with the most prosperous socialist nations of the modern day. Three and a half a day, holy cow. Total control, huh? APLA, declare war on them. Oh, they're just like, yeah, yeah we'll do, we'll join you. Which is great, 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 great. You are the 15 there. You are four there, which is okay, it's not great. Uh -huh. I don't think you guys can get in there, can you? I don't think so. You know, I'm gonna I'll set up the tank division for the next episode. <clears throat> Automatic rifles are good. Just trying to catch up to the West here. Let's mend some smend, sell send some small arms. Very much west. War with NATO. Joins collective treaty organization. If that's a case. Any more battle tanks? We need a lot of tanks. Well, at least we made more divisions overall. There's not that much more, but it's more, hopefully, of what we need. Attack helicopters are okay. Not fantastic, but they're okay. And I really wonder if we can win against these guys. Because if not, well, we're kind of screwed. Our industry is only 163, which feels like our industry is not developed enough. <laughs> invite them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Invite everybody. Support the new pink wave. Ah. Ever since the late 20s, the ideas of socialism has always been a point of interest in Latin American politics, whether it be the hardline Marxist, Leninist, Trotskyites, or Social Democrats. People like Salvador Allen, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, Guevara and Daniel Ortega shaped the communist movement in the region, and the influence still persists today. Unfortunately, the ideas of Marx cannot flourish in the South and Central America because of the one nation in the U.S. It's clear that America, the Central Intelligence Agency, would do anything and everything to stop the spread of socialism in Latin America, from funding genocidal dictators to anti-government uh, guerrillas. The violent drug cartels, now with the U.S. out of the picture, the people of Latin America can finally break the chains and restrain them, and we must aid them in their social awakening however possible. Oh, look at that. Hey. Operation Little Saturn. Oh, you know what? Screw that. We're going to do this one next. Force against force, armor against armor, fire against fire. 
Today we stand on the threshold of a historic moment. We face the task of freeing the brotherly people of Ukraine from the shackles of neo-Nazism and Western influence. We march together to bring peace and order, restore justice and restore Ukraine to its true freedom. It's not just a battle for territory, it's a battle for our common ideals, for our future and the future of our children. We know that NATO and alliance seeking world domination may try to stand in our way, but we're ready for it. Let our enemies know that we will not be broken, we march to victory, so... We will start the next episode fighting these guys, trying our best against them. No guarantees that we'll do well, but hopefully we will do well. Um, so, cool. Oh, look at this. Ah. War with NATO. War with the Western Europe is inevitable. Our goals for European dominance are hampered by the existence of NATO. This war, like all wars, must eventually end. I must do so before we are defeated, so our people can bear it no longer. The general staff is advised against an, against an invasion in the spring, but at the most opportune moment, we shall strike. In order for the victory to be absolute, we must hold Warsaw and Budapest. Nations that we conquer from NATO will be integrated into our nation upon victory. Oh, that'd be cool. But we'll do that next time. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll see what else we're going to do. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.